Stephen, after so many years, we have less and less survivors. And given the story of what happened in the Holocaust, it's becoming like a Steven Spielberg movie. It becomes like, it's just a movie. How to bring that to feel the kids, to feel the, the, the next generation, that it's not just a movie, that it really happens and the, that we have to remember it and not letting this happen again. We live in a very visual world today and yes. you know, young people are used to accessing visual media on a daily basis so you might think that in fact you know, listening to a Holocaust survivor just looks like listening to old people on videos. Yes. Our experience is actually very different to that yes. because what we see is young people really engage with the story. They want to know what happened, how did it happen and most importantly the big questions are what does it mean? You see, they live in a world of privilege, many of them. Um, or at least they live in a world where they have access to global communications. Um, what they don't actually experience um, is the kind of extreme experiences that the Holocaust survivors have had. So for young people that are experiencing exclusion or racism or um, other forms of um, discrimination, they engage very closely with the testimonies because they recognize it very, very much. For those kids that don't have those experiences, they really say it's seeing this and hearing this for the first time, and they also engage deeply. So I'm very optimistic that these testimonies will be used very, very well. One of the advantages of this new technology that you are using, this hologram, is that you can ask them. You can speak with them. It's not just watch. Can you interact with them? Am I correct? So the interactive holographic testimonies allow us to hold a conversation um, with the interviewee in such a way that it's more like, like a regular conversation. So normally when we see a testimony or a film, what happens is um, the testimony starts at the beginning of the life, goes through, talks about what happened during the Holocaust and what happens after. With these testimonies, that's all broken down into a set of questions. So now I can ask in any order, where were you born? Do you believe in God? What concentration camp were you in? Um, do you think there's hope for the future? In any kind of order, just like you would see in a classroom. The, the beauty of this is that, is that the conversation is driven by the young people themselves, so they find out what they're most interested in. I know this is a Shoah project, uh, project, but is this going to be used in other genocides, in other ways of learning? Maybe we can bring back from, from that some figures like Einstein, like, I don't know, good and bad people, maybe bring back, I don't know, Genghis Khan and ask him why you did that. I don't want to bring back some other one because we don't want them, yes? But can you bring them back or, or, or new people to, to get them closer to, to... So this technology was developed specifically to tell the story of the Holocaust survivors because we had a race against time. We yes. had to exactly. make sure that we got the chance to do this while there was still time. However, you will start to see this kind of technology being used for historical figures, for sports personalities, for professors, you name it. In the future, you're going to be able to interact with many more people in this kind of way. Thank you very much. Thank you for this. It is bringing the future to, to the present and bringing the past to the present and to the future. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you.